Um, okay, our speaker this evening is Andrea Scarfo, security analyst at OpenDNS. 12 years ago, she cut her teeth as a sysadmin, and now she is a malware hunter. So please give a warm welcome to Andrea. Thanks, you guys hear me okay? All right. Yeah, so the first uh, security conference that I ever attended was actually a B-Sides in San Francisco. And now this is my first time presenting in, at B-Sides again. So go B-Sides. So the title of the talk, uh, An Evolving, Evolving Era of Botnet Empires. Um, just a little bit about myself. Again, I'm an analyst on the security research team at OpenDNS in San Francisco. Um, before that, I was a sysadmin for 12 years. And then um, in my free time, I enjoy rock climbing, uh, playing video games, and surfing in the ocean. Not online, but I like that too. So the agenda for today, uh, we're going to start with the history of botnets, just an overview of the birth of botnets, uh, move on to the life cycle of a bot, uh, highlight some botnet uh, network architectures, uh, then move on to what a bot can do, botnet functions, uh, highlight some different malware that uh, bots usually drop, uh, highlight some famous botnets, uh, some detection methods, so uh, ones that uh, we use at OpenDNS, and then uh, manual analysis uh, of uh, botnet domains uh, from DNS traffic. Okay, so to begin with, uh, what is a bot? What's a botnet? Uh, it's a network of computers uh, infected with malware. They're controlled as a group. Uh, a bot will perform uh, automated commands, and uh, they're controlled by uh, command control servers, uh, controlled by a, a bot master. And then in this talk, we're going to focus on uh, domains that are uh, associated with botnets. So to begin with, uh, bots were, n were not always malicious. Uh, started out uh, with uh, in IRC channels. Uh, here's an example of a non-malicious bot. Uh, that would you could just play a nice little trivia game with uh, in an IRC channel, and it would even serve you a, a cold beer. Um, so when uh, bots first started to move around on, in IRC in 1999, a notable one uh, is called uh, Egg Drop. Uh, this one uh, was designed to control uh, user ban lists and uh, help prevent uh, channel floods from happening. And it actually had a feature that was called botnet. And it would, um, which linked the bots together between the rooms. And you know, we see that features evolve today with linking bots together. Uh, Pretty Park uh, was able to download files and execute them uh, in different IRC channels. And then one of the most famous, Agobot, uh, which was one of the first customized bots to order. So uh, from the coder, you could get a bot designed with uh, specific exploits that you wanted. One of the most famous was the LSAS exploit, uh, and, uh, which actually got the attention of Microsoft and law enforcement and, uh, to find the, the coder so they could shut that down. This is an example of uh, part of the code that was in uh, Agobot when it was first seen. And the source code was actually uh, released on the internet, which led to a lot of uh, um, bots, uh, barring that, making them their own. Uh, so it started out with just bots uh, participating in a targeted IRC attack, so uh, denial of service attacks and channel floods. Um, in 2003 to 2004, there was a, a boost in malicious bots on, on the net. Um, and they started to move away from just uh, communicating through uh, IRC to uh, HTTP, uh, just because with firewalls, uh, you could just block uh, the IRC traffic, but with HTTP, it's usually always allowed through a firewall. Um, so the life cycle of a bot, uh, it'll start with the uh, infection and, and then uh, spreading. So uh, an infection, uh, what they use for infection, um, they use spam. So they'll uh, initiate a spam campaign and send uh, mal uh, malicious attachments to, to lead to the download of the bot, um, or through uh, injected code on a compromised website, uh, which would lead to 
uh, to an exploit kit and also uh, through uh, malvertising, so uh, with malicious ads. Um, and then from there, a bot needs to make uh, contact with the command and control server. So there's different uh, rallying techniques uh, that they can use. Um, less common is a, a, a static IP list and a config file in the bot, uh, just because it's uh, easy to figure that out. Uh, so they've moved away more from that to uh, using a domain flux. So um, through a, a DGA, a domain generation algorithm, it will um, produce thousands of domains uh, based off of those DGAs, and then um, only one out of those thousands will be, uh, will be used actually as the command and control server. Um, and then they'll use IP flux, so they'll be constantly changing uh, the IP uh, that the domain is resolving to. Um, and then from here, once it makes contact, it's ready to uh, accept commands and uh, report back. So from here, it can be used uh, as part of a, a DDoS attempt. It can be used to uh, spread uh, as a spam bot to spread more spam to further the uh, infection and make the botnet grow larger. Um, or it can just become an info stealer to steal from uh, information from the machine. Um, and then the goal is to maintain that, uh, that bot, keep, keep it there, evade detection, um, and they'll use the same rallying techniques uh, with the domain flux and the uh, IP flux. Um, some of the network architectures that are used, uh, the first was a uh, centralized uh, command and control topology here, so also through IRC, HTTP, there's just one um, command and control server um, controlled by the bot master. And so just that one server would send out commands um, and uh, store the stolen info there. Uh, next is a, a peer to peer infrastructure. So the infected bots uh, can share in sending the commands and the data to and from the command and control server. And then it's using. Um, uh, file sharing protocols, uh, TCP, UDP, ICMP. Um, and then there's the hybrid one, which is the, uh, the most resilient and the most popular one nowadays. Uh, so just combine centralized with peer-to-peer. -peer, uh, th and there will be multiple command and control servers uh, and then one control panel that's controlled through. Um, and because of the multiple command and control s uh, servers can act as, uh, they act as proxies, so it, uh, it makes it harder to detect. So botnet functions, what can a bot do? Uh, so as I've said before, you can, it can act as a spam bot to uh, further infect uh, more computers. Uh, it can be a, act as a, a form grabber on a computer. So in the config, there would be uh, hard-coded URLs that it's going to, uh, to search for uh, traffic going there, and then it will grab what's entered into uh, forms on, on those sites. Uh, take screenshots of a machine just to grab personal data. Uh, redirect HTTP traffic. You're trying to go to a legitimate site and you get redirected to a fake phishing site where it can steal your credentials. Um, key loggers to steal passwords. Uh, they have VNC uh, modules where uh, an attacker can uh, remotely control your PC as if they're physically there. And then uh, stealing cookies, so participating in a session hijacking uh, to gain access uh, as an authorized user to a site. Uh, and then the bots will, uh, after they get infection, start an infection on a machine, they can also uh, drop different types of malware. So um, for, again, a, f a form grabber, form grabber, uh, this is an example of an old, uh, older version of uh, Drydex with um, pre-configured uh, URLs that it's, it's going to spy on. Um, it can be used as a Trojan backdoor to intercept uh, uh, any network traffic. Um, the most famous right now is uh, with crypto ransomware, um, which in encrypts the file system and then um, pulls the uh, decryption key. Uh, for a ransom. Um, banking Trojans, like Drydex, uh, just spies on banking sessions. Um, a, a click fraud bot, so like the uh, BDEP Trojan, 
uh, just to generate revenue by clicking on ads and then, of course, as a, a DDoS bot. Um, so one technique that um, the malware will use uh, once it's on a system is a uh, code injection. Um, this uh, screen capture here is uh, the Angular exploit kit um, using code injection on a, a compromised website. Um, and we've seen the Angular uh, exploit kit um, as part of the Neekers botnet. Uh, so here in this, this screen capture is showing a, a DLL file that gets injected into the uh, browser process. And the, the OS sees it as, as a safe process, so it allows it to run. Uh, and then at that point, the exploit kit can uh, take advantage of any plugin exploits uh, that the machine has, so through uh, Silverlight, Flash, or Java. Um, once, uh, once it executes that code, then it's going to download the Neekers bot on the machine, and it will be enlisted into the botnet. Some famous bots. Um, Drydex, it uses the uh, hybrid peer-to-peer uh, -peer network architecture. Um, first spotted in 2014, uh, mostly uh, stealing credentials to targeted banking sites. Um, today it's mostly spread through spam and um, uh, embedded uh, uh, Word documents with uh, malicious uh, macros embedded. Um, originally it had a centralized uh, uh, network uh, architecture. It switched to the more resilient uh, hybrid peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, there's a lot of numbers out there for the estimated amount stolen, but uh, 30 million is one of them. <laughs> and it was the target of uh, an attempted uh, takedown operation in 2015, which wasn't very successful. Um, so here's a, an example of the, the different layers that are uh, seen in the uh, hybrid peer-to-peer -peer, uh, layout here. Um, the first layer is uh, comprised of uh, infected users' computers. So this is where they'll accept and carry out the commands. The second layer uh, we'll call nodes that uh, is more infected users, uh, but these users can act as HTTP proxies, and that's bet between the, uh, the bots and then the front end uh, command and control servers, which are next. Um, and then the proxy layer is made up of compromised servers. Um, and that's going to act as another proxy between the back end where the control panel is, where um, all of the stolen data will be held. Uh, so I have a, a visualization, uh, a movie here, um, using um, Open Graffiti. It's an open source tool. Um, my coworker, Thibaut, uh, I can't really pronounce his last name, so I won't try. Uh, this tool, uh, Tebow made this tool. It's a 3D data visualization. Um, so we'll visualize uh, graph data sets. Uh, so what you can do is uh, take a JSON file um, that has uh, the relationships of the IPs, hashes, URLs, domains, um, uh, scene, and uh, put it into Open Graffiti. Um, and then we'll get a, a visualization here. So this is showing um, all of the relationships. Um, the, what the information I gave it here was uh, C2 servers at a time between um, 2015 and 2016 of uh, the Drydex botnet. Um, so the blue, the blue nodes are uh, the IP addresses of the command and control servers seen, and then um, showing how they're related to. Uh, URLs that were seen in the, um, in the orange color, and then uh, on the purple color, it's uh, hashes. So a lot of these, mostly uh, just the Drydex Trojan. And what this does, it helps us um, see the patterns in, in their, in their uh, infrastructure. And you can see how some of the IP addresses are related to each other through, through the hashes seen and others are uh, just out there on their own. And other, uh, the ones related have some pretty uh, large clusters. Okay. 
Uh, another famous botnet, Neekers. Uh, it's also a hybrid peer-to-peer uh, -peer botnet. So they use, um, they also will use uh, DGAs um, that they can push uh, update through the peer-to-peer -peer network so they can um, have the DGAs uh, sign different CNC servers uh, out through the botnet. And they'll, they'll generate a lot of these just to create noise. So uh, there'll be thousands of, uh, of domains out there. And they'll only register uh, actually one of the domains. Uh, the rest of them will just be NX. Um, they, Neekers has been seen uh, spreading uh, Locky and Drydex through spam. It's also been related to the uh, Angler exploit kit. And just recently, uh, it's been seen uh, as part of, of hosting the uh, LERC command and control servers. Uh, this is a new uh, banking trojan. It's estimated to have stolen $45 million already. So here's another visualization using Open Graffiti of the Neekers botnet. Uh, so these are the uh, uh, command and control servers that we saw and um, how they're uh, related to uh, the hashes, the, the hashes uh, I got from uh, virus total. And these particular ones here are uh, showing that they were seen associated with lurk, server, and VDEP. So both of these botnets have been the focus of some takedown uh, attempts. Uh, Neekers had a bunch of their command and control servers uh, sync hold. Um, on June 1st, they actually uh, went completely silent for about 24 hours. Uh, and during that period, uh, one million hosts were seen trying to attempt to connect to the, uh, to the command and control servers. Um, they've resumed full activity uh, already by the end of June and are taking part in more uh, spam campaigns. Uh, with Drydex, so their takedown attempt hap happened in October 2015. Um, really, they resumed activity a week later. Um, and this is due to its hybrid uh, uh, network there. Um, so it's still spreading the Tridex uh, Trojan, and it's actually been uh, doing something new lately where it's uh, participating in spreading uh, the Locky ransomware through. Uh, through spam, and it's usually uh, through uh, JavaScript exploits in the email. So some detection methods. Um, these are through uh, analyzing DNS traffic. Uh, so at, at OpenDNS, we see uh, 80 plus billion DNS requests a day uh, from the customers that are using our DNS resolvers. Um, so then since we get all those requests, we're able to see the uh, traffic patterns of queries going to the domains. Uh, and then we have uh, the history of a domain. So we'll uh, be able to see the history of the IPs uh, the domain's been associated to, the name servers, the ASNs. Um, and we have a, we have a tool um, that I use. and It's called Investigate. Uh, so we'll use it in, when we're investigating domains to see the DNS requests and then pivot off of the, uh, the different data that we have. That's a screen capture of it. Um, so th one way, th uh, one detection method is through uh, detecting uh, domain generation algorithms. So again, that's where it will use random characters and combine it with some type of dynamic component to generate just random domain names. Um, it might be a number combined with the current time and just symbols. Uh, it makes a new do domain each iteration. And then the purpose is so that the, uh, the bot has a, a way to contact the command and control server. Um, so very few of the domains are actually registered out of the thousands that it will generate. Uh, it just creates noise and makes it hard for the analyst to uh, to know uh, which one's actually being used. But it's easy to detect a DJ um, domain name just by using lexical f filters. Uh, here's an example of some Angler exploit kit uh, DJs. So here, uh, I guess what they're doing, they're, there's a, a letter, a number, and then an animal name in these. Uh, and they're all registered at, 
on the uh, dot top TLD. Um, these are an example of uh, the Tinba Banking Trojan DGAs. So it is possible to uh, reverse engineer the algorithm so to find out uh, what the what what the next domain is going to be that's registered, uh, and then you can we can pre-block all of the all of the domains, uh, and then this is an example of uh, some BDEP DGAs. So another way is uh, by uh, detecting traffic spikes in the DNS requests that we get. Uh, so if there's a sudden surge of queries uh, from the clients, uh, we'll see that sudden surge in uh, query requests. But um, you know, since a sudden surge in traffic, it doesn't always mean that something malicious is happening. It, we'll also run that uh, through other filters. So looking at the domain history, of it, so the IP history, like if there's been abrupt changes, the domain has changed uh, IPs uh, just numerous times. Uh, the query volumes that are actually coming in, and then the geolocation, like the distribution of the queries, and uh, then if this spike has happened before, like is it a normal thing for this domain to suddenly have a spike in traffic or not? So this will lead us to domains that are associated with exploit kits, uh, phishing campaigns, and then help, helps us uh, find the DGAs that are associated with the botnets. Um, so once these automated uh, tasks run, then uh, the analysts, we can do a manual analysis on the domains, uh, and then we can find additional bad domains off of the IPs associated, or the name servers, or the hashes, that, the malicious hashes that I've seen making a call out to those domains. And then we're able to give them categorization by using all of these different uh, indicators. So this is an example from Investigate of just showing just a sudden spike in traffic, whereas there was no traffic before, and it's a sudden spike in the queries. So uh, manual analysis, so here is uh, this domain uh, spotted on July 18th. So all this data here uh, is uh, what was seen on July 18th. I think it's since been uh, sinkholed after that date. So, so we see a sudden spike in traffic here. Um, and it also hit the DGA filter just because uh, the, the lexical filter on the domain there. Um, and then in Investigate, uh, I can also see that, that this domain has been associated to these uh, malicious hashes uh, through a, a threat grid integration. Um, and then these hashes are, are seen to be uh, locky ransomware. Um, and then I can go even further and see the different uh, domains that, uh, uh, domain callouts that, uh, the hatch actually made different network connections it attempted to make. Um, so here's an example of some more network connections uh, that the Locky sample um, was seen uh, making some uh, DNS callouts to. And you can see they, uh, they also, some of them look like more DGAs. Um, uh, this is just a, uh, an example of querying the Investigate API. Um, so it's, uh, it's querying um, just a given domain and getting back the, the hashes that have been seen associated to that domain and then showing all of the uh, associated network callouts that get made off of that malicious uh, hash. And also more, more DGAs seen there. Uh, another way is we can uh, pivot off of uh, the domain email registrants. So we have a registrant here that's seen uh, just registering a lot of domains that are DGAs, uh, all from the same email address. And they're also, it'll show me that they're associated to other, um, other malware attacks. Um, and then if I go through and click on those different DGAs that the registrant has registered, I can see some odd traffic spikes on those DGA domains. So if they have a similar pattern of, of spikes, I can see uh, if they're related. 
Um, another way is by uh, the co-occurrences off of those domains that are all under the same registrant. Um, so a co-occurrence is when a domain requests two or more domains within a very short period of time, like seconds. Uh, so here's this uh, DGA domain that's registered um, through this email address. It also has co-occurrences that are more DGAs. Uh, and then using some more uh, some more sources, I can uh, you know look on virus total, get some PCAPs of network traffic that's showing more malicious activity uh, that's seen uh, off of off of these domains, so I can figure out what the uh, attack is. Um, and then lastly, just connecting um, the the registrants uh, through to the different attacks helps. So uh, the email registrants. Uh, associated to their attacks uh, through the, the malware. So the malware will make a call out to the domains that the, uh, are associated to the email registrant. And then we're able to um, connect them to other registrants through uh, their domains as well. So uh, it could be dropped from one domain. Uh, so it's associated that way. And then it makes some call outs to another domain that's a, uh, a DGA uh, registered as part of a botnet. So here we've got um, the like Neekers botnet uh, connected through a registrant that's also spreading um, Angler on their domains. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? So you mentioned that uh, these people who write these things will register a bunch of domains for, um, I guess, like obfuscation. Are they actually, <clears throat> what are they doing with these domains that, uh, that actually get in the way of malware analyzers? So most of them won't actually be registered. It'll uh, be generated at, like, uh, the bot will try to make a call out to it but it's just an NX dom domain. Uh, it, it doesn't exist anywhere. So you'll see it in the DNS traffic that is, it's trying to connect to it, but it's not actually registered. It's only one out of thousands or tens of thousands. Of uh, so I'm more secure if I use OpenDNS than Google DNS. <laughs> because you uh, blocked um, DGAs. Yes. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>